technology with Dyson. Um, I'm going to say a few things about technology to start with. Um, it's been a huge phenomenon since the 1980s. It's been both attractive and problematic to entrepreneurs over the last 200 years. Um, there's a significant link between industry structure and the ability to respond to technological change. Um, it's been a driver of globalisation, which has meant increased competition from low-cost countries. Um, and it's also meant that shorter development times are needed due to the trend towards shorter product lifestyles and expanding legislation. And now a bit of background on both the companies. First of all, with Kodak. Um, the Eastman Kodak Company, also known as Kodak, is an American technology company <coughs> and was known as one of the most innovative companies for a long time. In 1884, George Eastman patents photographic film and later, he, um, a few years later, he markets uh, his invention. In the, uh, the early 19th century, uh, the Browning camera was launched at $1.00. The reason why this was so cheap was so that um, they could make the camera available to everyone. He wanted a mass market product so you could get as many um, consumers as possible. In 1975, Kodak was the first, um, Kodak built the first digital camera. This was built by an engineer called Steve, Steve Sasson. This stored images on a cassette. Due to um, uh, advancements in technology, they stopped selling film uh, cameras due to digital cameras becoming more popular. In 2005, sales started to decrease, and by 2009, they, uh, stopped, they stopped selling the kind of film which they had been doing for 74 years. In 2011, shares fell by more than, 70, by more than 85%. And eventually they had to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This meant that they stopped paying their workers' pensions, and so Kodak's pensions have um, sustained huge losses over the years. Okay, a bit of the history of Dyson. James Dyson established it and he still owns it. Um, in 1974, he invented the ball barrow after discovering a number of problems with his conventional wheelbarrow at home in 1971. Um, he developed 5,127 prototype designs over 15 years before reaching his first cyclonic bag, his Hoover, which again he established after, developing, after discovering problems with his Hoover at home. Um, he offered his invention of the G-Force Cleaner in 1983 to many major manufacturers, but they turned him down and they wished to continue selling bags, which were worth $500 million every year. And he responded by setting up his own company and opened his own research centre 15 years after the initial idea. Um, he, he then had huge successes. In 2012, their annual turnover was 1.2 billion, and they held 27% market share. So we've got three main Kodak turning points. Uh, firstly, it was the LA Olympics. Uh, Fujifilm, Fujifilm actually beat Kodak to get the sponsorship of the 1984 Olympics, uh, which meant that their main competitor had more publicity to then uh, promote their cheaper products, so it was <coughs> a bad time for Kodak. Secondly, uh, Kodak relied on the Chinese middle class in the 1980s to buy film. Uh, however, a lot of the Chinese middle class went straight from having no camera to a digital camera, so they failed to read the emerging markets correctly, um, and this was another down point for Kodak. And thirdly, digital photography. George Fisher, who was the CEO of Kodak at the time, actually introduced the digital camera, but he didn't think far enough ahead to um, think about what consequences this could have for his company. And so he didn't see the bigger picture or outsource production. So he could have come up with something like Facebook as a way of sharing these digital images, but he didn't do that. OK, and then for Dyson, I've got four main turning points. Um, the first model was sold in 1986. It was actually created in 1983, but as mentioned, it couldn't uh, get sold in the UK because the bag uh, industry was worth so much more. Um, this was the pink G Force that was revolutionary at the time because it was the first invention. Um, so he reached uh, Dyson in Japan because they were famous for high tech products and he got success there. And it began to sell for $2,000 a piece, which obviously was a huge amount of money at the time. And there's um, in 1991, it won the International Design Fair, so obviously it did make quite a big statement over there. Um, but despite this, he still failed to 
meat and he moved to manufacture it, so he did set his own up. Uh, secondly, he did break through into the UK market. Um, production began rolling off the line in 1993. Within 18, within 18 months, the biggest selling vacuum cleaner in the UK. So it just shows that the perseverance did really pay off. Uh, thirdly, he used the Far East, and the driving force for this was mainly because production costs were lower, and um, that was by 30%, so it could make him a lot more economically efficient. Um, also, it was a third of the labour cost in, in the UK, so he could save a lot more. Um, also, a lot of his suppliers were over there, so it meant that he could save transport costs too. Uh, the US was more the consumer side because he was aiming at the time for middle class um, home owners. So he was close to target market there and he increased sales by 350% and 27% market share. But they only sold for $450, which was nothing compared to Japan, but it still meant he um, gained more. Um, and finally, in the emerging economies, unlike Kodak, Dyson did predict that the emerging, these common, economies would emerge. Um, so he improved his turnover from 887 million in 2010 to 1.05 billion in 2011, just for predicting this market. Um, everyone knows that China is a powerhouse in the global economy, growing at 7.7% a year. So obviously, he moving there really benefited his company. He was attracted to the scale and variety of China, um, China's market, and he thought that was the difference between China and the rest of the world. But obviously there was very fierce competition, so hence the huge levels of innovation there. But um, definitely was a beneficial to him because now 85% of his products are sold outside the UK. And <coughs> now looking at um, why Kodak failed. Um, there are a few different reasons why Kodak failed. <coughs> Firstly, they had developed a culture of complacency. They used to be known as a very innovative company, but however, as they grew and became more successful, they also became more complacent <coughs> and much more set in their ways. They thought that they could use the same business model they'd been using for the past 70 years. However, this was the case. Secondly, they had poor organisational structure. Their hierarchy was too tall and they had um, and so information had to travel through too many lanes. This meant that new ideas often took a long time to reach the top, and therefore innovation <coughs> and culture, their previous innovative culture, was eventually lost. Finally, I think that Kodak didn't move into the digital age quick enough. Their competitors, for example, Fujifilm, Diverse Fund, they took advantage of the digital of, um, improvements in technology. Um, for Kodak didn't. <coughs> and they were um, very reluctant to make the switch from film to digital. There are lots of reasons for the success of Dyson. Uh, the first one's innovation, which is the process of translating an idea or invention into a good or service that creates value or for which customers will pay. And they're continually coming up with new ideas, which leads on to the next point of research and development. They spent nearly 1.5 million a week on research and development, and in 1996 they spent six times more on research than on advertising. Um, in the 2008 recession, they poured money into research. As James Dyson said, that technology is what sells in a recession. Um, research is still growing by 20% a year, and largely they're on the edge of 200 engineers. Um, it takes time and money, but they believe it's crucial for their growth. Uh, the third reason for their success is enthusiasm and passion. Dyson um, cares about the success of his own company. He is driven by failure and finds it interesting. And he embraces mistakes because he thinks you can learn, spark new ideas from it. Uh, another reason for their success was their outsourcing to Malaysia in 2002, uh, making them a multinational company, um, which enabled them to be economically efficient as they could take advantage of reduced labour and potentially more material costs, making them more competitive in the global as well. Uh, fifth reason is their use of patents. Uh, which give the owner the right to stop others making or selling the product. Uh, they hold more than 3,000 patents over 500 inventions. And they're really expensive to maintain, but they secure Dyson's competitive advantage, as no one else makes cycling technology vacuums. Um, another reason is growth, which is fueling them further. Their profits go back into research and development every year, and they can exploit it on a scale. Um, Globalisation is another reason for their success. 
It's increased their consumer market with 85% of Dyson products sold outside the UK. Um, this is due to the reduced transport times and costs as a result of globalization. Uh, their brand loyalty has meant they've got a like, very big consumer base and they've got a really strong reputation for quality design and functionality. And they've also made really accurate predictions about changes to the market by um, carrying out market research. And they're also really good at identifying weaknesses in existing product markets. We <coughs> have a SWOT analysis of Kodak. Um, their strengths, they heavily invested in research. However, instead of investing in however, instead of investing a lot into one product and developing it and taking time over it, they um, invested in lots of different products and they tried to launch them too quickly when they weren't ready. Um, another strength of theirs is that they had good distribution. Um, when they did launch a product, they were able to distribute it um, quickly, uh, particularly to Japan, which was one of their biggest markets. Um, the weaknesses of Kodak is that um, they become a complacent monopolist. They did think they needed to change or diversify, however, they really um, did and they didn't realise till it was too late. Um, opportunities that um, Kodak had, they missed a lot of the opportunities, um, particularly photo sharing, which Fujifilm um, got to first. Um, and the threats, their main threat was um, Fuji, as it was their main competitor. Um, they were going to be far more successful than Kodak, um, as they realised early on that they needed to diversify with improvements of technology. <coughs> okay, and then the Dyson. Uh, the main strengths are probably James Dyson, the um, CEO of this, because his passion is just um, drives the company. Um, secondly, the prediction of changing markets. Like she just said, the code obviously didn't do this, whereas Dyson were very good at doing that and they did predict, so they could change their products to work for this. Um, the recognition, the need of patents, so he could protect, protect his um, products. Fourthly, the expert customer helpline, which meant the brand loyalty was uh, improved because people would likely to come back and fix their products rather than go elsewhere. And also research and development and market research because this did help in all sorts of ways for their product. Um, the weaknesses, almost quite similar, mis miscommunication because it was such a broad company in so many countries and bases, it could mean that ideas were lost or that um, certain individuals didn't get their ideas heard or something like that. Um, diversification of products, this could mean that they need different marketing strategies because. Obviously, you can't uh, market a vacuum cleaner in the same way you can market a hairdryer. So they might have to pay a lot more to produce multiple adverts. Um, opportunities. We said earlier that they increased their market share to 27 percent through this is partly through globalisation. And as this is an ongoing process, uh, this could continue. Um, also, diversification. Uh, because uh, Dyson has built up quite a lot of brand loyalty, they probably can diversify and make these other products such as hair dryers, hand dryers, and that like they have already. Um, because people will recognise the name and, and think, oh, that's a good, you know, I've got that before, and therefore, you know, it's trustworthy. Um, also, they could widen their target market because at the moment it's quite a luxury brand, I think. Because, I mean, the cheapest thing is £149. So it cuts out the lower income earners. So if they produce a lower, um, lower quality or lower price product, they may be able to get more consumers. Um, then threats, i say the copies. Recently it's been in the news that the Chinese copied a ball mechanism and it's consequently been taken to court. That was a massive threat. Uh, competition, the main one is Hoover, which was established in 1919. Um, and people often say call a vacuum cleaner Hoover, which shows the correlation there. And thirdly, the recession. Like I said, they're expensive products. <coughs> in a recession, not everyone can afford to pay for a £500 pound of Hoover, uh, vacuum cleaner, whatever it is. Um, so we came up with a few management lessons that we think can be taken forward from this. Firstly, 
companies need to be innovative, they need to always have new ideas um, and new products coming forward. Kodak didn't have this, they got complacent and then um, because of that, Fujifilm got the sponsorship instead. Uh, secondly, we need to have an enthusiastic and motivated workforce. We think it's really important that the people that work for you need to be as motivated about the co company as you are. Uh, thirdly, perseverance. You can't ever give up. As James Dyson said, it took 15 years of frustration, perseverance and over 5,000 prototypes before Dyson got noticed. So because he didn't give up, he got his company to be successful eventually. Um, and then you need to be prepared for the consequences of new designs. George Fisher wasn't prepared for these consequences. And then the digital camera came out, but he wasn't prepared for what was to happen next. Um, and then lastly, don't underestimate your rivals. Kodak did do this. They didn't think that Fujifilm were as big a company, and then actually now they're a bigger company. So it just shows that you can't underestimate the rivals. Okay, to the companies now, Dyson's still very much successful. It's a big name that most people, I would say, have heard of. Um, it's still developing new products. I mentioned the hair dryer, the hand dryer, and they've also got a new washing machine and that sort of thing out. Um, there's also the James Dyson Foundation, which has just been set up for young engineers. And the idea of this is just to support them and um, encourage sort of inventors of thinking. Um, it's also quite good because it means that from a young age, people are exposed to license. I think that it extends brand loyalty because they've grown up with the name around them. Um, but looking to the future, although they are hugely in, 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 oh, <laughs> in a, they have high levels of innovation, <laughs> they do need to, win, um, to keep those levels high to stay competitive. Um, and now for Kodak, they've just emerged from bankruptcy in September 2013. <coughs> um, so that's positive that they've emerged from it. They've come out as a commercial printing company, so they're not actually selling to consumers anymore. Um, their shareholders were unfortunately left empty-handed, um, so there wasn't much left in the company for them. But Antonio Perez, um, who's the current CEO, will remain for another year, um, and he still thinks that Kodak is a valuable brand. Does anyone have any questions? Um, so and then the retrieval. We've got a um, video that yeah. we can show if you want to see it. Yeah. Other hand, tell vacuums have a motor like this. Dyson's new digital motor has neodymium magnets. It spins five times faster than the Formula One engine. And in use delivers twice the suction power of other hand. showing that was just because, as it was mentioned, they spent more money on the research and development rather than the advertising. I mean, that's literally a 20 second advert, which is nothing to compare to what you can see, you know, by any of the or whatever. So it just shows that that's possibly one of the best reasons why they are so where they are now, because they didn't spend all this money on advertising, but actually on the quality of their product. <laughs> okay, now, um, are there any questions from us? Great, follow up. If Kodak had developed digital technology and market search successfully in 1970s, do you think it would have taken off as much as it has in recent times? Um, I think a lot of the problems lie within the organisation. I think its management was quite poor. Um, but if they uh, did look into the future and, was, and noticed that um, digital technology was being more better, then it probably would have been more successful um, than it is. Maybe we would have gone into bankruptcy or it may have just been delayed. I think they just didn't anticipate, you know, anticipate that it would happen so quickly. They sort of thought they had a few years on them, whereas actually <coughs> it happened very quickly and companies they came and overtook them. So do you think it was um, a case of missed on opportunity or do you think it was just they didn't want to take like risks? I think a bit of both. Like they did they didn't look far enough ahead. Um, but also I think they were quite happy where they were and they did become quite lazy as a company. They didn't 
think about the progression too much, where actually they should have tried to keep up the ways of the competitors. Do you believe that uh, Kodok will have success uh, with providing like printing to commercial firms? Pardon? Sorry. And do you, do you think that Kodok will have success by providing uh, printing uh, machines to different firms? I don't think they'll be as successful. I don't think they'll ever be as big a company as they were because they were the first ever printing company. Um, but I think, yeah, personally, I think that they can carry on growing, but just maybe not to the scale that they were before. Like they've got rid of a lot of their employees, and so it would take a long time to build that back up again. <coughs> Um, right now, do, do does Codex do you have like the same product range, or is it going to expand into other forms of technology? Um, I'm not sure they actually. Well, they said that they're a commercial printing company now, so they're not selling the cameras. They're not selling to consumers anymore. They're just selling for the printing, like for other companies, I think. When Kodak, did, do you think they would be successful if they had taken one of their options and gone into pharmaceuticals and chemicals? Because that was one of their options when they were going into administration, that they were going to convert their company from photographic technology into chemicals because of their stock. Well, they were unlucky with this, actually, because they did um, think that it was going to go into that, but then the type of um, pharmaceuticals that they went into actually then didn't take off, so they prepared themselves for that, but it was a bit of bad luck in that sense because it just the market wasn't there for it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure it didn't say specifically. Yeah, I'm not sure on the exact yeah, we know there was a pharmaceutical element that they were hoping yeah. to go into, but they just yeah. didn't do a lot of Mm-hmm. 